Ariel Hawani in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, alongside the American psycho Stefan Bonner, the very tanned American psycho Stefan Bonner, who meets, of course, Anderson Silva this Saturday at UFC 153. You want to talk about the tan? Yeah, let's talk about it. Let's get that out of the way. Well, he's on a nice vacation in Tampa, doing some um, fishing trips on the ocean. You know, boat fishing, lobster fishing with the masks and all that. And then, the ring, phone rings, and wow, it's Ariel Helwani. Heard you're fighting Anderson Silva. Wow, how the hell did you find out about that? I didn't even hear about it yet. I haven't even heard about it yet. Don't lie. But anyways. I had a tan going and I thought, hey, I might as well keep the tan up for the fight, you know? 100 million people in Brazil going to watch this fight. Might as well have a tan, yeah. right? Well, you look great. And, and I was thinking about dyeing my hair black, putting brown contacts in, and then saying I'm Brazilian. I think this works for you. Thank you. What's this like for you? You know, we've talked over the last couple of years working yeah. together on television about wanting the big fight, the Twitter this followers, is it, man. the attention. This is it. I mean, you, everything I ever asked for. And more, really. I mean, yeah, it doesn't get, uh, names don't get bigger than Anderson Silva. In Brazil. Really? And I, I don't think I've seen a fighter with more Twitter followers than Anderson <laughs> Silva, really. 2.5 million. 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 But it's not just Anderson in Vegas. I mean, the people can't see what's going on here, but this is the biggest star in his you home country. Pan that way a little bit. It's madness here. How are you being received? Are they are they treating you the respect? Are they treating you like the underdog? How is the public and the media here in Brazil treating they, you? They've been great to me, except except her. She's she's been a little mean, but everyone else. Now they've been great. You know, I mean, I'm not jail. I'm you know, I'm like I feel Brazil's a part of me. I know I came up under Carlson Gracie, first half of my career, and I've been with Sergio Pena second half, and uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I love. I love it. I've been here once before, um, before and after I fought Machida in Manaus, and it was probably the favorite city I've ever been to. So it's it's great to be fighting here, and this is where it all began. You know, this is where it all be began, right here in Rio in Copacabana. Had you not uh, received this opportunity, were you content never fighting again? I mean, never is a strong word, but I was just coming to grips with like, you know, not not being not fighting. You know, not like. Yeah, moving on with my life. But yeah, I was, you know. So mentally, how do you go from that to fighting the best fighter in the world? Um, how do you turn that switch on? Well, because you get an opportunity of a lifetime, and then you think to yourself, in less than one month's time, I'm going to be locked in the cage with Anderson Silva. I got to get in some shape and work my ass off. So that's what I did. What kind of shape are you in? Pretty damn good shape. I can't lie and say like the 100% best shape I've ever been in because the training camp is three weeks and two days. I usually do three months. But like considering this is the shortest training camp I ever had, pretty damn good shape. And who did you bring in, anyone in particular, to help you train for Anderson? Um, I didn't bring anyone in, but I got uh, Chidi Chidi Bang Bang in Jakawani in Vegas. And uh, he may look like Chris Rock, but he moves like Anderson Silva. He's long and fast and slick. And black. What do you say to the people? I saw that promo with you and Forrest, one of the best the UFC has ever done. But it was uh, it was comedy. The UFC doesn't usually do that to sell a fight. What do you say to people who well, say I mean, that you're... You put me and Forrest at the coffee table shooting this shit, it's going to be funny. But what do you say to the people who say, Stefan's just coming for the moment, but he may not be coming to shock the world. Like, this is all just part I say, of... watch any other of my UFC fights, like all 14 of them. And when have I not got in there and fought my absolute ass off? Never. How do you beat this guy, though? He's unbeatable in the UFC. H have you pinpointed something that you need to do on Saturday to beat him? Uh, yeah, I just need to take it to him. I need, you know, I need to, uh, yeah, I need to take it to him. Need to, to get in there and, and fight my kind of fight and, and be willing to eat punches and give him right back. I can't lay down, curl up, and go fetal. I got to keep going, you know? And I, I'm going to be going through hell, and he's coming with me. Have you allowed yourself to wrap your head around the idea of you beating Anderson in Brazil, the guy who helped put this sport on the map here in the U.S., the biggest upset, the biggest underdog? Have you allowed yourself to think about that? Do you dream about that? Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And what's, it, what's the scene like in your mind? It's like my life changes. Like I'm negotiating selling the rights to the modern-day Rocky movie for MMA. And how's the wife, most importantly? I'm just hoping she doesn't stress out and have this baby before I get back. So after the fight, gonna get home as soon as possible, and and I want to be there when um, you know little mini me comes out. When's the due date? 
uh, two weeks after the fight. Okay. Uh, just but, hey, and I wasn't too worried about it. Then I saw the fo documentary on Forrest, yeah. and it's like, oh, and then I went to fight Shogun in Brazil. My baby was due two weeks after the fight, and I'm warming up backstage, and I get a, a call saying I'm going into labor. And I'm like... <laughs> it would almost be fitting if the same thing yeah. happens to you. Tell Except the result will be different. Yeah, so, I mean, I just told her, you know, like, night before, stay up super late, get yourself super tired, just go to bed early Saturday and wait for my call. No spicy food as well. Speaking of Forrest, other than not taking Xanax, what has he told you about fighting for uh, Anderson Silva? Just that, like, you go in there and do your thing, you can't do worse than I did. He said that. Are you familiar with the story of Chuck Wepner? Come on, that's what inspired Stallone to write Rocky. The are you leader? Are you the uh, Indiana bleeder? Yeah. yeah. Um, I believe he was from Jersey, though. Was he from? No, no. Well, they called him the. the I think you were right the first time. The Bayou bleeder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like but now I was calling myself the Indiana bleeder. Oh right. So. Very fitting. Yeah, are you are you that, that version? That's the yeah. That's why I'm saying I win this fight, and it's like I, uh, I yeah, I sell the rights to to make the modern day Rocky movie for MMA. Best of luck to you, and uh, I'm looking forward to the fight very much. Happy you got your Twitter follower fight. <laughs> Thanks.